In the creation of culture and civilization, water has played the most pivotal role. As it stands today, the overarching threat of apocalypse from climate change has put a glaring question mark on our water resources. Will the Earth run out of water? Will oceans change their course? Do we have a plan B to scour more water for our planet? Many questions and not enough answers. This is exactly why scientists are galvanizing their efforts into retracing the origins of water. While this particular area in science is highly disputed, many researchers are making considerable strides. By every passing day, we're an inch closer to retracing our planet's most vital resource back to its very genesis. Fascinating, right? So let's talk about it. A global general trend will show you something alarming. Gone are the days when countries would draw their swords or guns to fight over gold and other natural minerals. In today's age and time, the scarcity of water is brewing wars. Shocking statistics show that more than a quarter of the world's total population struggles with profound water insecurity. And this way, a robust prediction reveals that the next world war could find its major impetus in water conflict. This isn't the first time that civilizations have gone head-to-head -head with each other over water. From mythical stories to actual historical accounts, our past is full of water conflicts. Take the famous and groundbreaking Mesopotamian civilization as an example. Its legend-centric stories are full of mayhem and chaos, all centered around water. And well, even legends can have some degree of truth attached to them, right? What's really bizarre is that despite a plethora of archaeological evidence, we don't have enough sources on the origin of water itself. Of course, the creation of this vital source of life predates all forms of living on Earth and beyond. This won't surprise you, though. Many prehistoric civilizations considered water a gift from heaven above. After all, the most realistic and intuitive source of water was precipitation. If the gods above were happy and pleased with their subjects, the civilizations were blessed with light, fruitful showers. And if the people had earned the ire of their deities, their expression of anger ranged from devastating storms to floods that wiped out civilizations. So let's just say, we're oddly grateful for disaster management systems today. As you can see, as far as theological notions are concerned, the origin of water is just the prowess of God. But these explanations are fundamentally inadequate to answer curious scientific questions. Even today, planetary scientists aren't sure about the physical origin of water on Earth. However, the most widely researched and accepted theory suggests something pretty useful. Many scientists propose that ice-laden comets and asteroids are the primary sources of H2O on our planet. And we're going to put this little trivia theory into perspective real quick. Essentially, what scientists are telling us is that Earth's contact with meteor attacks is the primary genesis for water. The implausibility of this theory perhaps comes from the hydration content on our planet. A little refresher from a primary school science book would tell you that our planet is just 71% water, either in oceans or ice sheets and glaciers. So the abundance of meteor showers kick-started a bit of a revolution on the Earth. As meteoroids kept entering our planet's surface, they were leaving their natural moisture and content behind. So this entire phenomenon of water's genesis is literally a living definition of every drop counts. In doing so, we're talking about millions of meteor attacks that were monumental in forging Earth's very own water bodies. Of course, this process becomes cyclical through precipitation. Sun glares at the water molecules, they're vaporized, and then they condense into water clouds and fall back on Earth's surface. That's a pretty simplistic characterization of the process, but you get the idea. To make sense of this bizarre meteorite theory, we have to unfortunately run on two very vital assumptions. Number one, our planet experienced a number of beatings from foreign objects from outer space that had natural water content. And second, Earth's beginning as a habitable planet didn't have that we have water here flex. That is to say, for a significant portion of its age, our world was virtually brown. If we had images of the planet from space, we wouldn't have its classic blue imagery indicating its multiple vast oceans. This is both fascinating and terrifying. But as it stands today, we're mostly concerned with assumption number one on a series of meteoroid attacks, mainly because the theory is getting disproved in real time. You heard that right. Our long-held source of water is now officially disputed. It's a working theory as of now, but its implications run deep. 
A group of scientists has analyzed the melted meteors that were hovering in our solar system ever since its inception. Give and take, we're talking meteors that are four and a half billion years old. This analysis is particularly important because we aren't talking about any achondrites that crashed into our planet. These seven data points are the remnants of gigantic astronomical objects called planetesimals that collided to form planets as we know them today. Scientists also made sure to keep their seven data points pretty diverse. These meteors emerge from two key areas of our space, the inner solar system and the icier outer areas of space. This is because meteors emerging from those two focal areas of outer space yield in two different types of physical composition of meteors. So yeah, the research was pretty thorough, and planetary scientists did all of their due diligence only to get bamboozled by their research. Turns out, meteors have a very low water content, and when they melt, they leave everything but water behind. But don't worry, we aren't back to square one with the flop of this theory. Sure, it was a huge step back in finding life on other planets, the logic was pretty simple. Other planets experience meteor crashes too, so it's possible that water exists on some other surfaces too. As much as we want to avoid a don't look up snafu, there is not conclusive evidence regarding life on different planets. But planetary scientists do have some cool and fascinating ideas about the origin of water on Earth. The new working theory suggests that our planet was amazingly self-sufficient in forging its own water supply. Now, it is generally believed that the water content was pre-existing in the building blocks of our planet. But of course, the trajectory to find the origins of water is hardly that simple. So we're going to break down this new, cool theory for you. Planetary scientists were already exploring the homegrown water theory. Since water molecules are made of hydrogen and oxygen, the working developments hit a bit of a toll. You see, oxygen is pretty abundant in the crust and the mantle of the Earth. If the scientists figure out the levels of hydrogen content in the Earth's surface, that discovery would be akin to finding water beneath our planet. The only problem is that hydrogen is the lightest gas known to man. And if scientific inferences were right, any planetary material formed close to the Sun would be devoid of hydrogen. Until a team of scientists stumbled upon Enstatite chondrite, or EC. Even though we still don't have any robust info on the origins of these rare meteors, scientists are sure that they were formed closer to the Sun, just like our home, Earth. Their chemical and mineralogical composition is identical to the planetary material that was found in the inner solar system. And surprise, surprise! What scientists discovered in their study of enstatite chondrites has challenged our prior information on water. Folks, we're talking about a groundbreaking discovery that has some serious implications. As per published work, EC meteorites contain sufficient hydrogen to have delivered to Earth at least three times the mass of water in its oceans. Voila, now you know! Since the physical and chemical composition of ECs is pretty close to Earth's mantle, scientists are reasonably convinced about the homegrown theory. But in the process, they revealed something super fascinating too. Turns out, the theory on asteroid and meteor attacks wasn't completely trash either. It's true that meteor crashes aren't the primary source of water's origins on Earth, but they sure had a huge part in forming the deep, vast, and equally terrifying oceans that we know today. The deuterium-hydrogen ratio of the EC meteorites isn't a close match to our Earth's ocean and deep-seated water. So, as far as scientists are concerned, our water supply was enriched by asteroid impact and meteor crashes in one way or another. Either a certain strain of meteors left water on Earth, or perhaps it was just their mineral composition that altered the deuterium-hydrogen ratio of our homegrown water. Needless to say, we're thrilled, mainly because the close study of ECs also suggests that the possibility of life on other planets is not a miss. Venus, in particular, has remnants of ocean water. And, well, the possibilities are endless.